it's over here. It's uh, Blue Lane. Can I check your? Uh... There it says. Yeah. All right. I'm Ch I'm Cherry. I'm a technical manager at Blue Lane. I will show you briefly uh, how our technology works and the positioning. But before starting the demo, I just would like to to explain the positioning because what we're doing is really unique in the market. Today, when you have to secure servers, uh, most of the time there are some constraints with operational issues and security issues. Uh, when, it comes, when it comes to patching, for example, you need to, to do some regression tests, you need to stop the production in order to deploy the patches, you need to reboot the machines, and uh, this is sometimes uh, very difficult for, for companies. So we have created a, a virtual appliance and a physical appliance as well that sits in front uh, of the VM we want to protect, and within this appliance we are able to reproduce the security patch behavior of all vendors we're working with, meaning Microsoft, Oracle, Sun, IBM, and many others. We have developed a kind of reverse proxies, and within those machines, we completely and fully reproduce the same corrective actions than the vendor patches. You have a slide here, I don't know if you, if, if you can film it, that explain uh, the global positioning, meaning you have the unprotected machines, physical or virtual machines on the right side, and in front of those machines, you install the Blue Lane appliance, virtual appliance or physical appliance, and we reproduce using network patches the same corrective actions than Microsoft, Oracle, Linux in this example. I will show you the, the GUI, which is quite uh, easy to use, uh, very nice. Um, so, on this screen, you, you, you can see the, the, the main interface of our product. On the left side, you have, you, you should recognize this part, we have the hierarchy of the different servers with the data centers, the different clusters. Actually, we get this hierarchy from Virtual Center. We use VMware SDK in order to, to get this hierarchy. And on the right side, you can see all the different servers with the different operating systems, the different applications we, we cover in our data center with the number of patches we are reproduced within our product and so on and so on. So, first things to do when you install the product is to create security profiles. We, we do that usually using an embedded scanner based on Nessus framework. The goal of this scanner is to discover the different operating systems, the different applications, and to create security profiles. You can see that here. So you have here a list of all VMs we want to protect, and for each machine, you have a list of operating systems, applications with the version number that has been discovered. So for example, I've clicked on an IIS 5 machine. We see here the list of services and modules we are able to protect on this specific version, meaning 5.0. And for this machine, we have a list of patches and policies we can enforce. Regarding specifically patches, you can see that we have a lot of patches for IIS. I try to go not too fast. We use the same IDs that the vendor, meaning Microsoft in this example, so you will easily recognize the Microsoft patch numbers like uh, MS, uh, MS06-14, this kind of stuff, the CV number, the celerity, and so on and so on. So all patches are enabled by default, as you have seen on the screen, uh, because we are sure we won't generate any side effects by reproducing patches. This is a major difference with firewall or IPS technologies, because those kind of technologies work fine, but they, they require a lot, of a, a lot sorry, of expertise and tuning. With our solution, we reproduce the vendor patch behavior, so we are completely equivalent, so we don't need to tune anything, we won't generate side effects. In addition of patches, we can enforce and push policies. That's why we have another entry here. If I, if I click on policy, I can enforce additional stuff that I cannot do with the patch. For example, you can see here that it's possible to detect some injection techniques to detect hidden characters in path, double UTF-8 encoding, request this forbidden file intention, and so on and so on. Those policies 
are not enabled by default because sometimes they can generate side effects. So we propose those policies as a, as a bonus, but depending on the user needs, they are active or not. So it's really simple and easy to configure. Once you've done that, you're set. You're then set. Yeah, you have nothing more to do. You just no. everything can be automatized. Uh, meaning, by default, the product will automatically download new patches. It will activate automatically new patches. You have nothing to do. If you want to do everything manually, of course you can. But by default, everything is automatic. When a new machine is seen on the network, for example, a new VM arrives using vMotion or this kind of stuff, it is automatically discovered using the scanner. And we create automatically a profile and we activate automatically the patches. So it's really simple and easy to use. Because the benefit of using a virtualization is uh, that you're safer than, than the other way? Or is that one of the things? With VMs, no, you're not safer, but it's more easy to to, to be um, to use the, the, the resources, many CPU, memory usage, this kind of stuff. Of, of stuff. You're not safer with a VM, but you can do things faster. Faster is not safer, it's, it's different. You can do things faster. Yeah, but you have to secure VMs, and the way you will secure VM, you will have the same issue that with physical machines. And if you need each time you have to secure a machine, if you need to stop it, deploy a patch, reboot it, in production networks, it's really an issue, especially if you have a lot of VMs. So by doing that transparently and in front of the VMs, without any footprint on the VM, it's really easy. easy sorry. No footprint. No footprint. We don't install anything on the VM. We don't install any agent. We don't reboot the VM. Actually, you can secure the VM without any knowledge of the VM. Yeah. All it's right. true. So, uh, but now it's totally safe. It's impossible. To, this is not hacked. In the, secu- in the security world, the, the world impossible doesn't exist. No? Nope. You will... No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I won't say it's impossible, but today uh, our solution has been tested by security fir- firms like Breaking Point, like other uh, local firms that try to hack our box. Yeah. They were not able to hack it. So this is good for banks and uh, people who really, really, really need the security, right? Oh, yeah. We, we, we still work with a couple of banks, with service providers, with a, with a very uh, a very large companies, even SMBs. Uh, we work with AXA, with this kind of company. And uh, they, have, they have very hard security constraints regarding, uh, regarding this kind of environment. And they are using our product because it's easy to run, it's easy to install, and easy to manage. And it provides a lot of reporting features. I haven't sh- shown you, but if you just want to have a look, a brief look on the reporting screen, it's a little bit slow because this is our, our, our real demo. We are connected in California in, in yeah. our lab, yeah. so, so that's why you, you okay. can see uh, some latency. Normally, you're on a local network when you man- administer it. No, it's it, no? it's, it's, it's not connected. mandatory. What, one of our biggest customer in in the world is a luxury company. I'm not a, a, I'm not allowed to, to say the name, but they have a central management point based in Paris, and they manage uh, ten data centers in the world. They have data centers in the U.S., in in California, in, in Brazil, in Japan, and everything is centralized in Paris. So they use. There is different kind of bandwidth access to manage the different data centers. So, we have a lot of different predefined reports, executive reports, operational reports, as you can see on this screen. This is a, a, a global overview of what happens. For example, here on the left part of the screen, we, we can see different uh, Windows, IIS, Apache machines that are configured. On, on, I have 62 protected servers and I reproduce more than 5,000 patches. And I configure that only in five minutes. So it's uh, really powerful. And if I want to see the different attacks, clicking on monitoring, I can see all attacks that have been seen by, by the product recently. So with the, with the timestamp, the server ID, the gateway ID, the patch ID, and a, a brief description of what has been seen by the product. So this is a, in this example, this is a printer spooler service attack. This is a mechanism that allows to, to take ownership of the server using a, a, a shellcode injection. So. So this is a, this is a, like a hacker. Yeah. Has tried to penetrate. Yeah. So you, you report this to the police or. No, you, you, usually we use we use non-attacks to demo our product, 
we are not a hacking company, so we use well-known attacks. And one of the most powerful tools you can use to test your product with real attacks uh, is a tool called Metasploit. I don't know if, if you know this tool. This is an open source framework uh, developed by HD Moore and other guys. You can download it from the Metasploit website, and it's really powerful and, and really easy to use to test products. All right, but uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.